So, uh, hello, St. Petersburg. It's a great pleasure to be here with you. Um, today, we are going to talk about uh, automated regression. Uh, automated regression in a special context. Uh, we'll talk in uh, continuous delivery. So, uh, I'm Radek Lavmin. I'm, mm, I come from Poznań, Poland. Uh, so it's like the western part of the country. Um, I work as a senior QA engineer and a QA lead at Cognified. So more or less I do all those uh, quality assurance stuff. Um, before I did some project management. So maybe uh, I guess that's why I do my best to uh, optimize our processes and uh, at the same time uh, I try to ma make my work uh, a bit more efficient. So uh, yeah, that, that, that's uh, a few words about me. Uh, what we have on the agenda. So uh, at the very beginning I will tell you a few words about uh, AT. So it's like an open source tool that we developed. Uh, so you will get some information o on it. Uh, then I will show you some sample report generated with the tool. Mm, a few words how it works. So I will try to introduce basic concept uh, of AT. Uh, then uh, will be time for one more demo. So uh, I will show you some more advanced features. And uh, last but not least, uh, it will be a short part dedicated to continuous delivery. So uh, like the main uh, subject of today's presentation. So uh, let's start. So uh, AT basics. Uh, yeah, how, how, it really, uh, how it really happened that we developed this tool. So uh, in 2011, one of our clients asked for migration of hundreds of thousand pages. It was quite a big number and uh, we had no documentation, we, ha we had no knowledge uh, how, how these uh, pages should work. And of course, uh, we had very, very little time. So uh, what we decided to do was to create a tool a simple tool that will allow us to make sure that after migration uh, all these pages look still the same. So uh, that's how AET were created. And what is AET in fact? So uh, it's a tool, it's an open source tool that aids uh, front-end visual comparison of pages. So that's one feature. The other feature uh, that you may also uh, use uh, in this tool is uh, assessment of uh, the health status of your pages. So uh, apart from this visual comparison, this tool allows you to assess the health status of your page. So uh, how we make use of it in our company. So, uh, at the very beginning, uh, we have this definition phase. Uh, more or less, depending on the project, it can be longer uh, sometimes. But after uh, we finish it, uh, we start a regular, uh, reg we start regular implementation. So uh, there is a developer, uh, and uh, he or she uh, develops some code. Uh, it can be a feature, it can be a part of the page, whatever, depending on the project. But there is something, some work is done, and at one point we say that it, 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 it's been done and it needs some validation. So uh, QA appears here. So uh, page is tested, and uh, if we say it's okay, it's time for the first run uh, of AT. What for? Uh, the idea is to collect patterns. And uh, what is the pattern? So the pattern is, pattern is like a guide. It's like something that you will refer to in your next AT runs. Uh, so we, we have our patterns collected. So 
we do some more implementation. It can be another sprint, it can be the same sprint. It's different depending on the project. So uh, what we do here is another coding or it can be content entry depending, of course, uh, on, on the project. The thing is here that something changes. It can be styling, it can be something new on your page, it can be some content added, some text or images. There is a change. And uh, what we want to verify at this point is if this change affected what we did before. Of course, it may be a desired change, so it's okay. But what if we broke something? Of course, it's like the best uh, thing to address with AT. So uh, AT is not for looking for bugs, it's for looking for some changes. Track them and assess if they are desired or not. So uh, we run AET one more time and what we get is like a new report, new version of, of uh, our report. And then we QA or it can be developer or the author are responsible for assessing if all those changes are desired or not. Okay, so it's time for a short demo. So I will try to show you how our report can look like. So here it is. On the left, uh, you can see a side panel. So starting from the very top. Here is like a search. So it's a text field that allows you to search for queries that, may, that you may be interested in. Then you have filters. So here you can make use of some filters created by us before to look for uh, test results that, that you may be interested in particular. And here we have a tree with our tests. And what is the test? The test is a collection of URLs uh, and for each URLs, uh, we test various test cases. So uh, I will show you them in a moment. But one more thing that is interesting is something here. So here you can see some statistics. Colors are meaningful here. So uh, if you see something green, it's okay. You can review it, but you may uh, be sure that it's okay, there's nothing uh, that has been changed. As for the red color, uh, it means that something is different and you are to go there and check if it's okay or not. I will show you all these things in a moment. So uh, as for the main uh, panel here, there are some tiles. So uh, they in fact reflect all the things that you have on the left, so you can see the same a uh, tree reflected in the main panel. And of course you can go deeper and deeper to see uh, some results there. I will show you it in a, min in a minute. Mm. Let's go a bit up. So here you have some metadata. So uh, what are they about? Starting from the left. So here is like correlation ID. So it's like unique uh, ident identity of your test run. Then you have another kind of statistics. Uh, so uh, this part is dedicated to test cases. Mm, again, red color means something needs your attention. If it's green, it's okay. Then you have uh, the name of the project and uh, sweet history. So uh, we have all of our runs here. And if you would like to check when a given change uh, was introduced, perhaps, you can switch between uh, test runs. So by clicking it, you can see some previous results. So it's also very useful in some cases. Uh, what we have next uh, is like uh, the date uh, when uh, a given uh, test, uh, a given suite of tests, uh, in fact, was run and its execution time. So as you can see, it was, uh, I think, more or less two minutes. 
Uh, here, when you click this button, you will get uh, keyboard shortcuts uh, uh, explained. So when you have like a great number of tests, it's very, very useful uh, because uh, you can uh, very easily navigate between them. Okay, mm, next thing. Uh, it's li like a kind of note editor. And what it's for? Uh, we use it internally. Uh, some of our projects are quite big. So the teams are like 10 or 20 people. And uh, in this case, uh, people are not able to track every single change because uh, it's not like that we have only one person responsible for checking all those things here. Uh, well, sometimes uh, it can be like a few QA engineers in the project, sometimes it can be developer, QA, content author, whatever. And uh, in order not to raise the same issue more than once, uh, not to go from a person to person and look for some answer why this issue appeared, you may leave some note for your colleague here. So you can write something, we can do something like uh, raised add and give ticket number. So that's how it works. We click update and this note will appear here. Uh, okay, so let's try to see what we have inside. So uh, we'll start with this test. So as you can see, it's red meaning that something needs our attention. So let's go inside. Uh, so here we have uh, URLs. So let's go deeper and uh, go to our home page. What we have here, these tabs represent our test cases. So starting from the left, you see screen desktop, screen tablet, and screen mobile. What are they? They are, in fact, visual comparison in different resolution. Uh, we do not use physical devices. Uh, why I think it's no longer popular, it's no longer that common to create pages dedicated to uh, like, like uh, physical devices. We mainly uh, work with viewports. So uh, we try to find some breakpoint and uh, make sure that if we uh, configure uh, screen resolution to this breakpoint, uh, it will uh, still be okay uh, and it, it visually it, it works as it should. So uh, you can switch between them. So now we have screen desktop, we have screen tablet and we have screen mobile. So as you can see, it changes. So this is how it looks like for mobile. Then we have tablet. and screen desktop. So these resolutions can be modified by you. You can have as many of them. You can have like a dedicated devices here, meaning for example, you can have like a resolution set for your iPad Air, uh, iPhone something, Samsung, Samsung something, and so on and so forth. So uh, you can have uh, as many items here as you like. and. Uh, as you could see, the screen desktop is marked uh, with red. So let's try to search for something that um, changed in our page. Okay, so it's marked in red. So as you can see, this item here is, uh, is, pre is present uh, on our uh, pattern here, and it's no longer here. So it disappeared. It's still the question to us whether it's desired change, maybe it was removed because of something, or maybe it was missed at some point because, uh, I don't know, some styling issue or something like that. So uh, we need to decide if it's okay. If it's okay, we can click accept button here, accept a URL or a test case according to the level that we would like to accept our changes. Here, if we click Save All Changes, uh, all the items that we uh, accepted will now become new patterns. 
uh, which means that every single run starting from this point will refer to these, pattern, to these patterns uh, that we just accepted. Okay? Uh, of course, we can revert changes here. So let's try doing it. Okay? It still looks as before. Source. What source? In this case, we compare our uh, source code. So we check if there are changes or not introduced in our source. Uh, of course, we can see the full source. As you can see, some change, some ID, I think, here was changed, so uh, it was marked. And again, it's the question whether this change is desired or not. What do we have next? Uh, W3C compliance and accessibility. So in these two cases, we refer to external libraries here, uh, and we check uh, markup of our page. JS errors and status codes are also health checks of our page. So in this case, we collect status codes um, that are generated for every single assets uh, that is downloaded once a given page is uh, generated in your browser. Of course, you can filter them out and you can see only for uh, hundred something or five hundred something, meaning that something is not okay on your page and it requires your attention. So all the, these four items here are health checks, we call them health checks, and uh, visual comparison and uh, source are items that you can rebase, meaning that you can set a new pattern anytime you need to. Okay, so let's go back to our presentation. So just to summarize uh, what you just uh, saw. So visual comparison, accessibility, JS errors, status codes, W3C, source comparison, comparison, all presented in a nice report. So that's what AET offers to you. At how AET works. So uh, at the very beginning, there is the user. So the user creates a source of XML file. XML file is like a kind of uh, configuration file with some basic items there, a list of URLs and uh, other settings. So the user running AET sends this XML file to our system, to AET. AET process it and run uh, Selenium Grid. Selenium Grid runs a number of browsers. Uh, now, uh, by default, we have Chrome. So Chrome opens page, uh, tries to do all the uh, configuration items that we had, so like waiting for the page to generate, clicking something, and so on and so forth, and sends data ba back to AT. And uh, AT processes at it, and stores results uh, in a database. In this case, it's MongoDB. And once all these uh, things are done, the user is informed that uh, tests were run and report is ready for her or him. And uh, when the user wants uh, to see uh, the report, uh, she or he opens the browser. So the browser um, contacts AT. AT takes data from the database and presents all this data in the form of the report that you just saw uh, to the user. And it's like an um, Angular application that is responsible for it. Okay, uh, so now it's time for more advanced features. Uh, so, uh, as you know, I guess, uh, more and more pages are dynamic. Uh, dynamic meaning that they have uh, different components, different items, different elements, and the thing is that they are dynamic. So uh, every time you enter your page, you visit your page, uh, something may be different. So uh, the issue is how to test them automatically uh, if your page is different. 
Well, it's not that easy. However, AT allows to use certain features to address them. So uh, thanks to using our filters, uh, thanks to using our modifiers, you can simulate a behavior of the user or page itself. What for? Just to address such cases. So uh, let's go back to our presentation and demo, I mean. So uh, I will show you our Cognified page. So it's not something sophisticated. Uh, it's like a more or less standard page. However, you can see something like cookie disclaimer here. So you can click cookie settings to see some more information. You can accept it, of course. Uh, what we have else here, we have like a contact us page. So here we have a map. What's the issue with the map? Mm, this map is from the Google mechanism. So uh, in fact, it's not generated by us. So uh, we don't want to test it. However, it can differ uh, from time to time because it's uh, rendered a bit differently. Some items are added. Sometimes it's updated. And of course, you will have your tests read. How to address it? I will show you in a minute. What else uh, we have here is like search. So you just click search and you can enter some query here. So you get some results. Yeah, and mainly that's it. So uh, of course you, can, you have here a header of your page and when you uh, scroll your page down, there is a footer. Uh, please note, that our cookie disclaimer covers uh, part of our footer. So, uh, in fact, we don't know what's here. Okay, so let's mm, get back to our report. So, uh, I created some dedicated tests here. So, uh, for this demo, they are all, uh, they are all in the same uh, suite. However, you can, of course, have them divided. So, uh, Let's just try to see at our results. So as you can see, they are all uh, green. Why they are green? In source, I added certain filters that allows me, uh, that, allo that allowed me to just ignore some cases. Uh, I think you don't see colors here. I wonder why, but maybe just a matter of this pro projector, but never mind. Uh, so uh, I excluded some items here, uh, not to have my tests uh, read all the time. Why? Um, maybe we decided to address this issue like during next sprint, or maybe we need to wait for decision of our client. So uh, this exclusion is somewhere in our suite, so we uh, will remember about this. Maybe we also raised some bugs, but our suite is green just not to make any chaos, no, not to see them all red every single time we run them. What else? Uh, as you can see, uh, the issue with, uh, with a cookie disclaimer. So, uh, you know, I guess, cookie disclaimer. It's like some disclaimer that is introduced by the law uh, I think it's in the, European, in the European Union. I'm not sure if it still works uh, in Russia. Maybe yes. Uh, however, the thing is that it covers uh, sometimes your page. It can be something small, but of course it can be a huge one. Or it can be like a light box that needs clicking on it before you can see the whole page. So uh, in order not to think about this, you can just remove it from your page. So you just set a cookie, and this cookie behaves in a way as if you, as the user, clicked OK, and it no longer appears on your page. So you just test only pages without a cookie disclaimer. But on the other hand, you still want to test it. So uh, as you can see, it's like additional test where this cookie disclaimer is uh, displayed. And when you look here, we can scroll down, so there is no cookie disclaimer here. What is also removed from here is our footer. 
So we test footer in a separated test, and the same goes for our header, so it's also here. And when you look at these tests here, we had no footer here and no header here. So the question is why? Well, usually if you change something in your footer, if you change something in your header, it's like a small change. But if you have like hundreds of pages, it will be a pain to go uh, across all of them and click accept, accept, accept. Of course, you can do it automatically, but still you can miss something. So uh, it would not be a good practice. So granulation in this case is like something very, very useful. So you test separately footer, separately header, and separately cookie disclaimer. As I showed you in uh, cookie disclaimer part, there was some part of the content hidden. So you can also tell AET to click it. So as you can see in this test, I see uh, this content part of our cookie disclaimer. So AET opened the page, clicked it, and it's presented here. Okay, and the uh, last thing I wanted to show you uh, now is like hide option. So uh, as I told you, uh, we have a map on our page. So we can say AT to ignore map. As you can see, this page uh, displays no map. So AT opens this page, uh, do a screenshot, but the map is ignored. Why not to get all those items read? Because they, uh, because they change almost every single day. So again, you will get like your report read. It's not good because it will require a lot of your attention. So we just, in this case, we just test the layout of your page. So as you can see, it looks like these fields were just empty. Okay, so uh, they were uh, some sample uh, mm, modifiers. We had a lot of them. You can log in to a part of your page that requires adding credential. You can set uh, a header. Uh, you can also execute any JavaScript as well. So according to your needs, you can modify AT. Uh, as I also said, we have something like uh, filters. So uh, that's another feature. So going back to our presentation. So that's the items that you already saw. Extensions, uh, something very important. So you can add your own extension if you like. Uh, and threshold. So it's like setting a tolerance threshold that can overlook your changes. For example, if you focus on some most important changes and uh, a pixel or two here and there uh, do not matter for you, you can just uh, tell AT to overlook it. AT in CI CD. So uh, thanks to tools like Bamboo or Jenkins, uh, you can configure jobs or uh, kind of a plan that will run your tests whenever you need it. In our company, it works like a kind of uh, quality gate. So uh, depending on the project, depending on the team, you can have it run automatically during preparation phase or you can do it on demand. When the code is built and deployed, you can also have it tested with AT automatically. So uh, it's also good thing. But what we also do is like running AT locally. So uh, developers can run AT on their local machines before the code is promoted to any of our environment. It can be done easily with Docker, so it's like a quick thing to do. Using Docker, you can run your local AT instance, or you can use Chef. So all of these items are open source, so they are available for free, so you can just visit our GitHub page and download it there. And uh, last part of this presentation, a bit more on continuous delivery. So. Uh, as I said, uh, AET is like a quality gate uh, in most of our projects. So it can be at any 
step here, uh, run on demand or run automatically. So, so it's really up to you. Uh, you can arrange it as a team. And uh, usually our environments uh, look like this. So we have some develop environment, we have some stage and some UAT. UAT is like for client for uh, acceptance testing. But what if you have like more, like different streams? Uh, one of our project had like 16 environments. So it was a pain because team responsible for 1.0 one, 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 two, and so on. They, they just didn't know what other streams did. So uh, how we address it? Usually you will need to go one by one and click accept, 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 going to guys and asking them what they did and how they did it. Uh, it was a pain at some point, uh, going and looking for some people among uh, 30 people. Uh, you can, of course, uh, version your AET results, but still, it was also a pain because you will need like uh, store some kind of a few gigabytes, send it, uh, run, and so on and so forth. Again, not good. So we created additional module to AET that allows to configure which environments you would like to compare with. So you can compare let's say alpha to Victor or kilo to tango and so on and so forth. So this configuration is up to you. So this feature was just implemented. We are just testing it and we are going to release it very soon. So as you can see, nothing that may seem to be impossible at one point can be done by people who didn't know about this before. Okay, so summary of this presentation. So AET is an open source tool. It aids your front end layout comparison, but it also provides a kind of a health check of your page. Uh, it's a perfect tool to apply in continuous delivery. Thank you very much, any questions? Dear friends, uh, our time is up, so you can ask questions personally. We can ask questions personally. How are we going to translate the questions? Uh, you can you can come to our speaker and ask questions in English. Ребят, я в любом случае здесь еще несколько часов, поэтому если у вас есть какие-то вопросы, не стесняйтесь, подходите, задавайте ваши вопросы. Извините, что я так долго э, рассказывала, что мы с задержкой начали, но у нас были кое-какие технические проблемы.